Hi, my name is Dave Bodie for Touch Plus, and in this tutorial, we're going to talk about working with MIDI and working with multiple MIDI items or multiple MIDI tracks. And specifically, we're going to be looking at how to do this inside of Reaper. Now, we're looking at a project here, and Reaper is my audio application of choice. The reason for this video is if you've been working with audio, working with MIDI for a while, you probably have developed some habits or a certain way of doing things. You may have gotten pretty proficient at doing things a certain way, and that's all fine and good. Because of this, you may be unaware of some faster ways to do things, some different utilizations. So that's what we're going to look at in this video. Over the last 10 or 12 years, as I've been doing more and more recording and programming and working with better and better virtual instruments, synths and samplers, I've developed several bad habits throughout my workflow. Somewhere along the way, I have discovered, sometimes accidentally, some better ways to do things. For one thing, navigation. So it's pretty easy to work out, especially if you're in the main arranging window, that the scroll button does a number of different things. Uh, by default, the scroll button does a horizontal zoom. So if you hover over somewhere in your project and you use the scroll button, it will scroll and it centers around the play cursor here. And if you are over here along the edge, over the vertical scroll, your scroll button by default, without actually clicking and dragging this, will do a vertical scroll and it will do the same thing over here. Now, if you're over the tracks and you do this as well, it will do a vertical scroll. However, if you happen to have your mouse over a fader and you do the same scroll, it will actually adjust the volume of the fader which is something that you probably don't want to do by accident. So there are some other ways to navigate as well. And specifically, this comes in handy when you are in the MIDI editor here, which I'm sure you're familiar with if you've worked with MIDI at all. So by default, the mouse wheel will do a horizontal zoom. If you hold down control, now it does a vertical zoom. So without control, a horizontal zoom. With control, now we have a vertical zoom. Now, if we hold Alt in scroll, this does a horizontal scroll right down the timeline, so to speak, which is the, very similar to doing this, right? And if you hold Control Alt, Control and Alt, we get vertical scroll. Just like in the main arranging area, you get vertical scroll if you scroll over here, and you get vertical scroll if you scroll over here, but also if you hold down Control and Alt, it's a lot easier to do that. Those are some very useful things to know. And once you kind of force yourself to use them, they can really speed up your workflow. A couple other very interesting things here. One of those is what gets displayed on the notes here. So we're looking at the second violins here. They're doing a fast kind of arpeggiation thing here. And so I'm not exactly sure what gets displayed by default, but if we come up here to the view menu, we have a few different options that we can select. Now we can go from piano roll to named notes, or we can go to event list. I don't know about that. Most of the time I use piano roll. And if we look at piano roll notes, we have some options. Now, by default, I believe it's rectangles that it shows, but we can also set this to triangles. Or we can select this to diamonds for a kind of more drum mode, because a lot of drum samples and drum hits are going to be single shots, so they don't really need any length, really. All you really have to be concerned about is when they happen. So this is another way to look at that, I usually just leave it to rectangles. We can also do this. We have options here to show velocity handles on the notes. So I believe by default, that is what's set. So if we click that on, you can see there's a little line here. And now what we can do is we can click and drag up and down and adjust the velocity as opposed to jumping down here and adjusting it this way by clicking and dragging this little MIDI CC lane down here. Another very useful thing is to show velocity numbers on notes. Now that may not be necessary because how I have it set up is if we look at color notes by here, 
I have it set to velocity. So that's another kind of visual indication of what's going on. I can see that the, the darker green notes are the lowest velocity. And as it goes up, it goes through almost a yellow and then onto maroon. It's pretty easy to tell what velocity they are that way. But if you needed specific velocities for the notes, for example, some of the Cine sample stuff that I use by default will trigger different mallet types depending on what velocity layer you are. So say, for example, if you're above 80, it will trigger a hard mallet. If you're below 80, so 79 and below, it'll trigger a soft mallet. And so that can be an easy way to just double check because down here, you don't get any representation of what the numbers are. And by default, when you click this off, you don't get an idea of what the numbers are until you grab the handle here and move it. And then you can see, or you do the same thing down here and then you can see, oh, well, you know, I need that here, but then you release it and it goes back to whatever the default thing is. Now, I believe by default, note names are not on either. So it looks something like this. That makes your world a lot easier because you know, as you're, as you're scrolling up and down here, you can kind of lose your place visually what you're looking at. So that's really useful too. A lot of times I'll just roll with the note names on there. Now, in addition to this, say we're working with multiple items, right? In this particular case, I'm looking at one of the five string sections that I have programmed for this piece of music. And so for a long time, I did this kind of thing. I would edit the violins, and then I would jump down here to the violas, right? And then I would edit them, or you can do this kind of thing. If you select two, say, and then you double click. Now we can actually see both of them. We're looking at the second violins up here. And then if we double click down here, now we get the violas, but we just lost the other part there. So we can see them until we switch to the other track. And we can do the same thing. We can do all four actually and see. So we can see everything that's going on here and get a view like that. Now, another thing that makes life easier here is MIDI CC lanes here. You can see I have hold pedal, which I don't think that I actually need. I'll get rid of that. Most of the time I have mod wheel and I have velocity. And there's actually a couple of ways to modify how you change the view on these, how you make them larger or smaller. By default, if you just click and drag, it adjusts the ceiling, so to speak. And so you can make this one taller and you can make this one taller. If you hold shift down, guess what? It does something different it makes both of them taller, which is awesome because, you know, if you have them down here and you're like, oh, I need to bump those up and take a look at what's going on there, boom, it's just shift. And that saves you two mouse clicks. So you don't have to go like this and then like this and then, oh, you know, kind of resize them. You can just hold shift and you're good. The other one is control click and that will adjust the height of just one CC lane, leaving the other lanes height unchanged. You can also collapse them by double clicking this little grippy area here is what they call it. It's little dotted edge right here. And that's a quick way to collapse them and expand them out. We're here and we're looking at multiple items, right? So there's a couple of things that we have at our disposal to make working with these multiple items. We can click this. This is the track list. We can toggle this on and off. Now what the track list does is it gives you a list of the tracks and specifically the MIDI tracks over here. And we can collapse these down if we don't want to look at all of them. If we right click right here, we can choose which tracks appear in this list. And then we can X and click those out. So now we won't see the timpani or if we want to get it back, we can just uncheck that and then come back here. And now we do see it in there. But also this is a very handy way to kind of globally look at things. If we jump back to the strings here, they're all the way at the bottom. So if I click on one of these, this little arrow here means that we have this track selected and you can only have one track selected. If we control click multiple tracks, you can see that only one of these is going to be the selected track. But let's just jump back to one track here. And uh, if I hit control shift alt with the right mouse button, we get the hand tool and that's very useful for scrolling around as well. Right here, this little lock icon says this track item is editable. And then also this indicates that all the items are visible or just some of the items are visible. So by default, when you click on a track, it will show you the little MIDI clip here that you selected 
but it also shows you the other clips that you may have down the line. And in fact, if we twirl down this little triangle here, you can see that we have three other clips, one that starts at bar eight, one that starts at bar 33, and one that starts at bar 41. Pretty cool there. If we click these, you can see that all of them are editable. So I can come over here and I can grab these, even though I'm not technically selecting this clip, I have access to all of these notes. Let's say we wanted to look at what's going on in all the strings. Well, what we can do is we can control click or we can shift click a number of these. So I can just control click the ones that we wanna look at. Say we wanna look at all these. And I believe if you click all of them, it automatically just kind of selects this parent folder here. And so if we wanna look at what's going on here, now we can get an idea of everything that's going on. And this is useful because say we wanted to track what's going on in the chords for this section. And we're looking at the second violins here. Maybe we don't wanna look at the second violins because the second violins are doing this rhythmic pattern. So we wanna look at some of these other ones here. We wanna look at violins and let's see what's going on here. we want to track what's going on harmonically here. We can see that we are looking currently at the first violins MIDI. We don't have access to these other ones until we go over here and we toggle on this little lock icon here. And that will toggle on that these tracks are now all editable. And so they, they show up as being slightly transparent because they're not the tracks that are selected. And you can see right here, it's telling us that the first violins are selected, but we can grab any of the notes in these other tracks and select them. And if we wanted to be sure of which one that we are selecting, we can come over here and we can click and you can see they get kind of full opacity where the other ones drop to less than full opacity. So if you were looking at this chord and you can say, okay, here we have a C, a G, an F and a G. So this is a C sus four chord that's going on here. And maybe we didn't want this to be a sus four chord or maybe we just wanted it to be a, a fifth chord we can come up here and grab this note. And that was a terrible idea because I like it like it was. It's a lot faster to do it this way than try and bounce around between clips. Another very useful thing is this right here. This is the MIDI item lane that's going to live down here. And what this is going to do is a very similar thing to the track list, except this is going to tell us where the items are. So you can see here, if we just click on one of these, we're looking here at the second violins and the second violins through this piece has three main clips here. And so we can look at this clip right here and click down here and check out all of these clips or we can select all of these and look at them all at the same time. And just like we could over here in the track list, we can make these all editable. And this is another very cool way to do it as well, because we can uncheck everything. And now this is a lot easier if you're not trying to squish this down into a 720 screen. And if you do have a 720 screen that you're working on, like a laptop screen, God help you because you'll spend several hours of your life, in fact, probably weeks, if not months, and possibly years scrolling around. But this gives you a really great view of everything. Very, very easy to jump around this list. And as we collapse these, you can see they disappear from the list. So we don't want to look at the woodwinds. We only want to look at the strings here. And so we have that right here. And so another way that you can kind of look at things globally here, if we want to jump down here and check out what's happening later on, uh, this can be an easy way to do that. Because sometimes if you are clicking here and say, we want to check out what's going on over here in all of the parts, that's not necessarily super easy to do. You can see that we can see the parts, but they're all kinds of grayed out. So we'd have to come in here and click this clip, but we can just come down here and we can make a selection of where we want to view what's going on. So we can select all of these and that is very, very easy. And I like to use this quite a lot for making sure that all of the parts are good and they all line up. Cause a lot of times what I'll do, especially when I'm programming for strings, I will get a general idea of what's going on and, and kind of lay the foundation, maybe using a string ensemble or perhaps a piano. And then I'll copy the parts over to the individual first, second violin, viola, cello, bass, etc. 
and I want to make sure that everything is right. You know, I didn't delete too many notes. So very, very easy to check that out. You can also, if we came across a section that, you know, we needed a whole bunch of the velocities adjusted at once, so we can grab all of these, right? And then we can come and just push them up a little bit. In a lot of these more busy sections, you know, we can, we can come here and make some adjustments to that. Same thing for quantization. You know, you can grab all of these, hit Q, and it'll quantize all of them across all of the MIDI items here, which is very cool. You can do that with humanization and transpose as well. It works really great with, you know, harmonic things where you're managing multiple parts to create some kind of chord structure to make sure that you have the right voice leading and everything sounds good. But also, you know, you can use it for percussion to make sure that you have things timed up correctly between multiple things. You know, if you had tambourine here with the snare track, because they're doing a similar rhythmic thing, and I want to make sure everything is, is lined up correctly. So really easy to do that as well. And another thing that's pretty handy is this over here, we can name the key. So by default, this is C3, right? But this is a tambourine hit and I forget exactly which tambourine this is, but say this is small tambourine. This is using Cinepert core. And so say we wanted to label this small tambourine hit. Now we have this key labeled. So it can be a quick way to reference, you know, as you're looking at things, you know, if you have the snare drum patch here, this has several articulations on it. So we have a particular snare drum here. We have another one up here, a different one up here. So if you wanted to label, you know, which one is this one? If you're using multiple snare drums in the same piece, this can be useful to do. A bunch of cool usability options in Reaper. And there are far more than that. There are so many shortcuts. Just by default, there is a mind numbing level of shortcuts available. And you can also program custom ones, custom actions, and much, much more. But that is for another tutorial. Thanks so much for joining me for this tutorial. Again, my name is Dave Bodie for Tuts Plus. Thanks so much for watching, and we'll see you around. Bye-bye.